What's up designers, welcome back to the studio. Um, in the last tutorial, I talked about how to um, cut up some black sheets of paper and using a one inch base system, design a whole bunch of black shapes to use. Well, um, in this tutorial, we'll actually talk about what to do with some of these shapes, um, how we might uh, use them in a similar way to um, how we've done some of our drawing exercises and uh, sort of learning how to design quickly and intuitively. Um, it will also kind of, uh, uh, introduce some more complex design systems and um, maybe introduce some other tools uh, to um, to your repertoire to see what you can't do to kind of like bring some um, some visual interest complexity and some variety to your designs uh, for this you'll need uh, your envelope full of black shapes you also may find it handy uh, to have a piece of tag board um, as we'll just use it as like our white background uh, you could choose this, a page in your sketchbook for this but uh, since we're eventually going to be using the tag board uh, you might as well grab it tag board is uh, smooth on both sides it should be nice and bright white it has kind of like um kind of a thick thwacky sound to it uh, so grab one of these sheets and i'll meet you in the design studio what we'll do here at the beginning of the tutorial is uh, use our piece of tag board as sort of our um, blank template and um, bring shapes to it. And we'll, um, we'll use uh, sort of a constraint of about 30 second design session or so uh, to see what we can come up with. You may find it useful to keep an X-Acto blade around, not necessarily to cut anything, but to help you move some of these shapes around. Uh, so I'm just gonna start with a couple of these design sessions to give you a sense of, um, of how quickly I like to move through them. After completing a quick design, um, what I like to do is make a record of this. And maybe the easiest way for you to do that is to use your smartphone. Think of it a little bit like a sketch. We'll just make sure everything is squared up in the frame and not too much of all this extra stuff is included, just the design itself. And I'll go through a handful of these designs just to kind of loosen myself up. So one of the things um, that I hope you'll start to discover as you work with these shapes, especially all the shapes that you really uh, stayed true to the one inch base system is that you'll find that um, they start to agree with each other. Uh, there are sort of um, alignments and sort of, it's not really random because you, you designed this kind of hidden system into it. This kind of like check that um, every time you hold a piece up to another one, it sort of has a, it has a place, um, not unlike a puzzle piece, right? I want you to think about that as you work with designs um, and try to work quickly with design in the future is, you know, what sort of kind of hidden um, system can we build in to our designs or how can we kind of set ourselves up to get designs to sort of come more quickly to you and end up with this and end up with interesting design uh, more intuitively uh, the one inch base system is sort of a suggestion that there may be more going on to good design than just what we immediately see on the surface um, do this uh, for at least 10 or 15 exercises just to see if you can't get yourself uh, something uh, interesting and if nothing else uh, it's a really great way to kind of loosen up a little bit now this isn't the end there's a couple of other techniques that we'll use to um, add complexity to our designs in cut paper uh, one of them is well we used the straight edge paired with an exacto knife and you know I don't want I'm not gonna sell these short you can come up with really interesting complicated designs using an exacto blade and a ruler uh, or an exacto blade and a straight edge so even if this is the only technique that you use uh, we could do some really great work here um, one of the things that you may find that you want to do periodically as you're kind of working along is um, modifying shapes on the fly right so here's my first suggestion is that as you're designing uh, with these cut paper shapes if you find yourself really wishing you had another version um, go ahead and modify your shapes so that you can you know 
have some have some of that uh, have access to shapes that you didn't necessarily just kind of come up with. Uh, not all design has to be kind of freewheeling and intuitive. You can kind of uh, bring some intentionality to it, and modifying your shapes on the fly is not a bad way to do that. Um, I think we can also probably introduce some more sophisticated tools to the system. Um, I'm not going to necessarily say that a scissors is more sophisticated than a straight edge, but uh, it can allow us to cut some more organic shapes, and it can allow us to sort of make really quick work of something. So if I wanted to make uh, a series of really, really small shapes, uh, an, a scissors can sort of make quick work of these, uh, where the X-Acto blade is really great at maybe being precise on larger shapes, uh, but these really small shapes, um, the, the scissors just kind of does a really excellent job with those. Um, there isn't a scissors in your art kit, uh, but if you have one laying around the house, it's not such a bad idea. Now, we can also use the X-Acto blade to do some other kinds of cuts. We don't always have to pair the X-Acto blade with the straight edge itself. Uh, we can, for example, use the X-Acto blade similarly to how we might draw a curving line. Um, if you're going to do a curving line with an X-Acto blade, uh, I recommend a couple of specific sort of techniques to keep your lines flowing really smoothly. Um, one is generally stand up, or if you're not going to stand up, at least get your uh, elbow and your wrist off the table. Really, really small, detailed uh, cuts are going to come from your fingers and your wrist muscles, but if you want your cuts to flow and you want your cuts to sort of not have this jagged kind of stop-start sort of feel, you need that motion to come from your elbow and your shoulder. And for that, uh, for that to be the case, you've got to get your arm up off the table. I also like to sort of pin down my paper on the far side, and that way as I'm sort of dragging the blade through the piece, it doesn't get away from me. Uh, this is going to allow me to start to cut curvilinear or uh, organic shapes uh, just using that X-Acto blade. Now, I've also got a couple of radius cutters in the studio. Now, these are actually button, uh, button machine cutters uh, because they work so well for um, cutting out standard size circles for buttons. But let me, uh, let me demonstrate how I like to use them as a radius cutter. Using this piece of sketchbook paper, um, I'll just sort of press onto one of my cutting board pieces. And with hardly any effort at all, I've got a very precise circular cut, cleaner even than something like a, um, a laser cutter. Uh, the, the razor blade tip that's built into this thing just makes really, really fast, quick work of circles. Now, I mentioned earlier that it has some standard sizes built into it, um, but you can also cut pretty much any custom size uh, down to, say, about an inch in diameter by adjusting the cutting head in to the pivot point that's on the inside here, or I can pull that blade all the way out to about a four inch diameter circle is about the maximum radius of a circle using these radius cutters. Um, you can also uh, not just you know be stuck with something circular, uh, but you can also work with rings by cutting an inner circle out and then without moving the outer edge of the tool, adjust the tool to whatever thickness of a ring you want. Now, um, this is you know exciting, right? The, this idea of being able to work with perfect circles and perfect rings. Um, this would potentially right, bring a lot of visual interest to design where otherwise was sort of stuck with geometrics, um, especially being able to stack white on black. Now, as I'm stacking white on black, um, it may start to kind of seem a little bit silly that things are getting really kind of piled up here, but your phone, remember, is the tool that we're using uh, to, uh, to document these, and your phone really is not going to know the difference between a white shape and a black shape, white shape stacked on top of black, it's just going to see the sort of positive negative duotone here and convert them otherwise. So your, your phone sort of collapses this big stack of shapes here. Let's come back to this circle cutter tool though because um, I actually kind of like it uh, for doing more than just circles and um, I like to use the, uh, the radius cutting capability here to be able to work with shapes that otherwise wouldn't probably have come up with. Uh, using the radius tool to sort of design those shapes um, and cut circular or the radius shapes up to four inch diameter uh, and actually breaking down entire pieces of paper into those radius shapes can really make for some fun possibilities, uh, especially if you're interested in getting um, radiuses to sort of meet and line up with each other, making successively larger or smaller diameter circles. 
Um, these tools can be really, really handy. I have a couple of them in the studio. Uh, I'll let you guys work with them. Just got to be careful to watch out for the, um, the sharp tip on the inside. Um, because of the limits of the four inch diameter circle here, I also want to say there's, or there are other sort of objects around the studio and techniques that we can use to get radiuses or other big straight lines. I find that sometimes just, you know, finding uh, something around the studio that's about the shape that I want to use and using that to cut works just fine. For example, this piece of tin just happens to be a nice large diameter radius. And I can run the blade right along the outside and be able to cut nice clean radiuses that are much larger than my circle cutter could cut. Uh, these shorter sh sort of shapes could be cut fairly easily, um, you know, by hand with a scissors or something, but uh, being able to sort of trace a template that already exists in the studio is a really fast way for generating radiuses. So as we begin to work more and more with our cut paper shapes, um, we not only are going to be working with our black shapes that we started with, and we're not going to be just necessarily stuck with our one inch base, uh, but we're going to be kind of freed up to work with some white paper, we'll be freed up to work with more organic shapes, and um, possibly even using some of these more advanced cutting tools. The whole idea here though is we're going to keep coming back to our 30 second, our one minute, our two minute, our five minute design sessions, um, and kind of grow our library of paper design sketches. As we get a larger and larger library, we'll be able to bring these designs into a program like Adobe Illustrator and learn more about how Illustrator can help us build these shapes with nice clean vectors. I'll see you guys in the studio.